What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I'm going to walk you through how to load sounds onto your Novation Circuit Rhythm. I'm going to walk you through the components editor that Novation provides and show you how to record sounds directly into your circuit as well. So without any further introduction, let's jump into it. The first thing to do is to go to components.novationmusic.com or launch the standalone software editor. In this case, I'm working with the standalone software, but the experience will be exactly the same. I've already connected my circuit rhythm to my computer via USB, so now I can select the circuit rhythm option and dive into the editor. And this gives me the little indicator that it is in fact connected. First of all, I want to take a pre-made pack and load it onto my circuit. So I'm gonna hit upload pack, and I'm gonna select a version of my circuit rhythm pack, and that's gotta be in the circuit rhythm format. And this is what you're greeted with. This doesn't have any projects in it, and I've got a ton of samples populated across here with a bit of space left over for recording stuff in. This can also be edited and customized from here, which I'll get to in a second. And I've also got my grid effects laid out here. Once again, I'll get into customizing all of that in a second. But let's say that I like the way the pad is just the way it's been designed. I'm gonna hit send to the circuit rhythm and then I can choose send pack or some of the other options. If I hit send pack, it will come up with this menu if you've already inserted a micro SD card. And this micro SD card needs to be formatted to the FAT32 format. Once you've got that, you can choose which slot you want to send the pack to. So as you can see, I've already got a few loaded onto here, so I can just choose an empty slot and go from there. That does take ages, so I'm not gonna do it right now. But let's go back to the main screen and create a pack from scratch. You can drag stuff in individually and the samples can accept audio files of a bunch of different types. In this case, once again, I've got my pack pulled up here. So let me go to my kicks and I can either drag individual files in one by one and just cherry pick stuff, or I can grab a bunch of files all at once, drag them all in and select an empty slot and it'll auto populate, which is super nice to have. You do want to pay attention to your sample storage as it fills up. It fills up a bit quicker than you might expect. So I would recommend keeping the samples that you load in short whenever you can and keeping an eye on that. And also be aware that it will collapse your samples down to mono. If you've already got a pack loaded up here, you can also download samples from it. And if you're just editing an existing pack, you can always send stuff to the circuit rhythm more specifically. And you can go through multiple pages of samples until you've loaded in everything you want. So I'd go back in this case to my collection of snares select all that stuff, drag it in, so on and so forth. Super straightforward to work with. And because all this stuff is audio files, you don't have to worry about patch formats or anything like that, like you would with the circuit tracks. We've also got access to edit our grid effects. And by default, you can uh, select a grid effect, drag it into a slot, and then customize how it behaves. For instance, in this case, I've selected the beat repeat. You can select the rate that it operates at, whether or not that's triplet and how much of that effect you'll actually hear. So you could have a blend between the normal signal and the process signal if you want to. Very similar for a lot of these other uh, effects. You've got quite a bit of control here. I especially like loading in digitize and then having a version with sample reduction turned all the way up and then a version with bit crusher turned all the way up because you can have multiple instances of the same effect with different settings. So in this case, turn bit crusher all the way up and phaser I use pretty often. That's often tempting for me to completely overuse. So that's really nice to have. You've got a lot of options here and you can also just select from the drop down menu here. I've not filled up my pack all the way by any stretch, but let's say I'm happy with this and want to call it done. I can directly send that to the circuit rhythm like I showed you earlier, or I can save it. So I can do stuff like downloading it directly to my computer so I can share it with others, or I can save it. Let's call it tutorial pack. And that will save it in uh, my packs over here. And I can uh, come back to it later if I want to, send it to the circuit whenever, and uh, there will be Novation packs living in here as well. If I go back to this pack, I can also change settings about it, like the color that it'll show up as on the circuit itself. And of course I can delete stuff if I really want to. I should also mention that we've got the firmware update window in here. So this is where you're gonna go anytime Novation releases a new firmware update, which they have been pretty good about. And finally, under your help, you've got access to driver related stuff, uh, some instructions and other related downloads. Now let's actually jump into the circuit itself. First of all, to access those packs that I've already loaded in, I'm gonna hit shift projects, which has the packs up here. And now I can select any of those packs that I've loaded in. So just select it and then hit play 
to load up the specific pack that you want. It'll take its time to load, and then we can start to access all the projects. If you haven't checked out my dedicated tutorial on how to use this thing, definitely check that out. That'll show you how to navigate the project system as well as chop up samples. Uh, I'm just gonna restrict this tutorial to showing you how to uh, record in samples, which is what we're gonna do next. To actually record into your circuit rhythm, first of all, connect whichever device you've got, your synth, drum machine, anything else. In this case, I'm just gonna connect to the mono input because this just has a mono output. And by default, input monitoring should be on. So now you can hear the synth running into the circuit. Let me load up a blank project and I can go to sample record. And this looks a little bit intimidating, but it's actually pretty simple. So first of all, you've just got uh, your sample selection window, just like you would in the individual tracks. I'm gonna go all the way to the end and there's a bunch of blank ones that are represented by these red squares here. You can also clear samples if you want to, and I would recommend being very cautious with this. And if you've got a pack that you like, I would recommend duplicating it first, which you can do in the packs window. You just hold down the duplicate button and go from there. Let's go back to this project we've got active. Let's say I've got a sample that I don't need. I can just clear it. And I believe there might be an extra step involved in that in the final version of the firmware because this is a pre-release unit. But let's select a blank slot here. And I've got a few things that I can control. First of all, this controls whether or not it's resampling. And you can both resample and record in at the same time if you want. I'm just gonna turn it off for now. We'll get back to that. You can control whether the input monitoring is on or off. Now it's off. Now it's on. Pretty straightforward. You can control uh, the threshold. So threshold when off will start recording the second you hit record, even if there's nothing going on. If you turn threshold on and hit record, it'll wait until it hears something. And then once I hit a note, for instance, then it'll start to record, which is super nice to have. And you can turn on attenuation if you've got a super duper loud signal. So we've got our settings the way we like them. In this case, I've got the attenuation off, I've got record threshold on, and I've got input monitoring on, as you can hear. And I've selected my slot, so let me just hit record. And look at this progress bar. This will tell you how much time you have left. And that'll get shorter and shorter as you keep filling up the samples. So let me record in another sound. That sound kind of sucks. It'll take its time to save it. And I can just keep filling up these slots. You can see how this is shortening. And I should have left that tail in. Don't make the mistake that I just did, but hopefully you get the idea. And now if I jump back into my tracks, all those samples that we just recorded are here, freely available, and will behave the exact same way as anything you loaded in via components. Like I mentioned earlier, you can also resample stuff back into the circuit. So it'll listen to its own output and then record that into a sample slot. So let me show you how to do that next. Let's go back to sample record, turn uh, resampling on, make sure it's green, select an empty sample slot, and then I'm just gonna hit record and then play. <laughs> Also note that at this point, I've filled up all my available sample space. So if I want to record anything else into this pack, I need to start deleting stuff. So now if I go into my sample selection, that whole thing is just living in one pad. So you can do this for a bit of sound design. If you want to layer some sounds and then resample just a one shot and then map it to a keyboard, or you could chop up your own beat and flip that. So let me change my sample mode to slice, go into expand. I showed this in my dedicated tutorial, by the way, in a little more detail. Now, and I love uh, just tuning stuff way down. making like vaporwave flips of stuff that I've already created. If you are completely new to the Novation Circuit Rhythm, you might want to check out my beginner tutorial on it. You can click or tap up over here to see that. And if you're looking for some high quality sounds to load into your Novation Circuit, you might want to check out my $5 sample pack. I did a video on that as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.